Well, hello again, Vinyl Community. Uh, just a quick one today. I have only a few new records to show, but uh, all are really quality stuff. So I'm really proud to show, in particular, brand new album by Koenji Hyake from Japan. Uh, one of their uh, impenetrable titles, Dorim Viska, is the title. It's a double LP on the Skin Graft label. I got this through the Kickstarter campaign, so this edition comes with a lot of uh, extra bells and whistles and fripperies, including, of course, that it's on colored vinyl. Uh, this disc is gray with streaks of multicolor. I don't know how well it'll come through. And the other disc is a brownish bronze color, purplish brown, again with various streaks. They say every copy will be different in some degree. In addition to that, there is a poster featuring the band, led by Tatsuya Yoshida, the drummer, and on the other side is the album cover art. Uh, it also comes with a magnet, like a refrigerator magnet, with the album art. And a card with the limited edition number. My copy is number 76 out of 175 made. Uh, and if you're not reading this backwards, it actually is printed backwards. And an OB strip. The music is awesome. Very driving very tight, very energetic, uh, similar to Magma, so it fits in that Zul category, um, but definitely with its own ethos to it, its own uh, Japanese feel, a lot of male and female vocals going on, the band is drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, and uh, saxophone, plus the male and female vocals great album on uh, Skin Graft label. Another new release but older recording is this album by Univers Zero from Belgium, Sud de Deor, Those from Beyond or The Outsiders. And uh, this is a brand new reissue on Sub Rosa. New cover art also remixed. The original albums uh, recorded in 1981. And like Koenji Hyake, this is a band led by its drummer, uh, drummer Daniel Denis. The album also features Guy Seger on bass, uh, Patrick Anapier on violin, viola, Michel Bertmans on bassoon, oboe, and English horn, um, Andy Kirk on keyboards, so very much a chamber music approach, but the music is very driving, uh, has a lot of darkness, not without humor though, so wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. Chamber avant rock. And there's an insert with liner notes to that. And I didn't plan this, we're actually going backwards chronologically. Because this is Morton Sobotnik's 1969 album, Touch. And this was his first release on Columbia after the two uh, classics on Nunsuch, Silver Apples of the Moon and The Wild Bull. And so this is an old copy on the gray Columbia Masterworks label. And this is one of my favorites of Subotnik. It has a lot of uh, percussive effects. It's all, uh, as usual, created on the Buchla synthesizer. Um, but he does so much polyrhythmic, like, um, you, I get a feeling of tropicalia, of jungle percussion, a lot of different uh, drum-like, marimba-like, bell-like sounds all going in various patterns simultaneously and this will alternate with smoother sections that still have an interesting and exotic feel. So uh, that's a really highly recommended piece of uh, classic late 60s electronic music. It's 
uh, the piece tends to be promoted as, oh, this was designed for uh, four-channel sound, and it was released later on a quadraphonic LP by Columbia, but the original release really predates, I think, the availability of um, uh, home stereos with quadraphonic sound. I don't think that came out until the early 70s, so uh, the 72 release of the quadraphonic version would have coincided with that. Finally, we have music of the Brazilian composer Etor Villa Lobos. This is a set of four of his Bachianus Brasileiras, which was a series of suites he wrote in the 30s and 40s, um, taking harmonic and contrapuntal ideas from Bach and applying them to music inspired by his homeland of Brazil. Um, it's not really overtly Bach-like music. It's quite interesting. He does a lot of interesting instrumental combinations. Each piece is scored differently, and this contains uh, Bachianus Brasieras number no. 2, which is for a small orchestra, and that includes a couple of saxophones and a lot of Brazilian percussion. Um, the saxophones give it a little bit of a jazzy, bluesy tinge in a place or two. And the final movement is the famous little train of the Caipira, which sonically imitates a choo-choo train, which is a little corny, but it works nicely. I like that piece a lot. Uh, number five, which is the vocal piece for soprano and eight cellos, sung here by Victoria de los Angeles. It's also the, uh, the piece that was covered by Joan Baez on her uh, number five album. And there is uh, number six, which is a duet for flute and bassoon. I love that combination. And number nine for string orchestra. Now, this is under the direction of Villa Lobos himself. And Villa Lobos was not particularly interested in proofreading his own work. When he finished a piece, he wanted to go on to the next one right away. So the published scores are said to be full of errors, even including notes that are not playable on the instruments they're written for. So they say the only way to hear the music performed correctly is to hear it done under the composer's own direction. So that's what we have here. I'm not sure if the recording is from 1958. The release is from 1958, uh, which is only a year before Villa Lobos died. Uh, this is on the Angel label, and that label design indicates that this copy would be from the uh, latter half of the 70s or possibly even the 80s. I always put a little plug in the description section of these videos for my own music, um, which is usually available through CD Baby. Um, right now, CD Baby is sold out of my most recent release, which is... Uh, Paleozoic. This is on green vinyl. Um, they do have the CD version in stock. I just wanted to let people know if they happen to be kind enough to click that link and see that it's sold out. There are more copies on the way. You can also get it from Wayside Music, which is a company you should really be aware of if you're interested in the kind of music I show in these videos, because um, they're great. And if all else fails, you can always get it from me. And here's a little trivia, the trilobite on the back cover. This is the actual fossil that was photographed for that. And CD Baby is also, um, they, they do still have my previous album, The Insect Garden, in stock. So if you're interested in that, check them out. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I will talk with you again soon. I know I have some more goodies coming in the mail. So I'll be excited to show those off when I can. Be well. Talk to you again later.